I'm 34, and my wife is 31. We've been married for just over 8 years and have been together for a total of 10 years. Our marriage has been incredibly fulfilling and satisfying in every aspect. We cherished our time together, our physical connection was strong, and we were each other's closest confidant. Mutual trust was the foundation of our relationship. We made a deliberate choice not to start a family immediately, opting instead to savor our time together and save for a home. Last year, we finally bought our dream house, and this year, we had plans to expand our family. Unfortunately, those plans have been derailed. I have a stable job with a good income, while my wife is dedicated to her role as an elementary school teacher, where she's adored by both students and parents. However, what happened next will make sense in light of everything I've shared with you so far. On a particular Tuesday, I got a call from a woman who asked that I call her right away, as she had important information to share with me. I didn't recognize the name and thought it was a sort of scam, so I deleted the message. Normally, when I get these calls, I also block the number, but I forgot to do so this time. Later in the day, I got another call from the same number and let it go to voicemail. In the message, the woman explained she was the spouse of a former co-worker of my wife who had recently passed away. She said she had some very important information to share with me and to call her right away. I didn't recognize either of their names but thought perhaps she was just trying to get a hold of my wife to tell her of his passing. I closed the door to my office and called her from my personal cell phone. She answered right away and didn't waste any time telling me what she had to say. She first explained who she was and then went on to tell me her husband had recently passed away from cancer after battling it for over a year. I offered her my sympathies, wrote down his name, and said I would advise my wife of his passing. She cut me off and said that's not why she called. She then explained that while under hospice care and near the end of his earthly time, her husband confessed that he had a three-year affair with my wife from mid-2015 through the summer of 2018. Hearing this sent Corisol rushing through my body, and my heart started racing. I was stunned by her statement and fell silent, struggling for words. After regaining my composure, I asked her if perhaps he was just hallucinating from the medication. She told me she was absolutely sure, as she later found hundreds of messages between them on his laptop. There, she also found a disturbing video they made of their final encounter, which occurred on the 17th of August, 2018. As she spoke, I just kept telling her I didn't believe it. I asked her to send me proof and gave her my personal email account. She proceeded to copy and send me several of the most damning messages between them, but the video was too large to be sent through mail or via text. I asked her if she had a jump drive, she didn't, so she ran out and bought one. When she got back, she called me, and I led her through the process to copy the video to the drive. The next morning, she overnight the drive to my office, and I received it on Thursday morning. I brought my personal laptop with me to the office that day for the sole purpose of watching the video. I put the thumb drive in and hit play, and I couldn't believe my eyes. There was my wife and this gangly looking guy I'd never seen before doing things I can't describe here. I'll just say it was horrifying. Some of the things they did were not just disgusting, they were unsanitary. In the 29-minute video, they were both very vocal, laughing with pleasure, and clearly enjoying themselves. It was sickening. When I first hit play, I'll admit I immediately started crying and became nauseated. But after watching for a while, my sadness turned to madness, anger, and absolute rage. I felt like I wanted to break something or someone. Thankfully, my wife wasn't around when I watched it, as I don't know what I'd have done if she was. It's now 7.09pm on Thursday evening, and I've been typing out this post for the last hour and a half. I called my wife earlier this afternoon and told her I was going out for dinner with clients. I occasionally have to do this for work, so she bought my story. As far as what I'm going to do, I'm not totally sure, but I'm strongly leaning towards divorce. There's no way I could force myself to stay with her, and I'll never be able to forgive her. In fact, after what I saw her doing, I really don't want to get near her without wearing personal protective equipment. I'm not kidding about that either. Also, the fact that the video is four years old doesn't matter, she cheated on me, and I cannot accept that. Now, here's where I'd like your opinion, should I confront her with the evidence and give her a chance to explain, or should I just go straight to an attorney and serve her divorce papers? I haven't informed anyone else about this yet, as frankly, I'm too ashamed. That's why I've come here to discuss this anonymously and get your feedback. I promise to read all comments. Now, for the first update. I just wanted to give a quick update on where things stand. 
After grabbing some dinner on Thursday evening, I finally went home and acted normal with my wife. Thankfully, I was able to keep my distance from her, and she didn't attempt to initiate closeness. On Friday, I took the day off and met with a divorce attorney after conducting extensive research online. I presented the attorney with the evidence, including the video. She explained to me that while my wife clearly violated the vows of matrimony, it will have no effect on the outcome of the case. I asked her how, and she explained that our state is a no-fault divorce state, which basically means either party can pull the plug at any time without fault being placed, no questions asked. I asked her how is that possible, and she told me it's the law. She said we can all thank Ronald Reagan for starting this back in the late 60s when he was governor of California. She said he was the first governor in the nation to sign this into law, and since then, a number of states have followed suit. I was surprised to learn this, as I always thought he was one of our best presidents, but now I'm not so sure. That doesn't change anything though, as I'm still going forward with the divorce. It just means that I'll come out of this ordeal a lot poorer. The thing I'm still wrestling with is whether to confront her or just wait to have her served. I want to wait, but I don't think I can hold out much longer. It was really difficult being around her the past two evenings, and I'm not looking forward to seeing her tonight. It's Saturday morning, and I'm writing this as I sit outside a coffee shop just down the street from my house. I told my wife I needed to reply to some work emails and was headed down here to do it, which I do on occasion. Thankfully, she didn't ask to come with me, but she's already texted me a couple of times asking when I was coming home. I think she may sense something is up with me. That's all I've got to. Report for now. Thanks for all the advice and recommendations. It's been comforting reading all your stories and hearing what you have to say. Now, for the second update. Greetings. I've come back to give a quick update on my situation. It's Sunday morning, and I'm again sitting outside a coffee shop typing a post, but this time I'm 20 meters away from my home. I ended up snapping a week ago and confronting my wife about her affair. I did it last Sunday morning after not being able to restrain myself for another minute. I made it through Saturday, but that's because we went to the museum and out to dinner with another couple, so I didn't have to spend much time alone with her. That night, we were both exhausted from the day, so she didn't attempt any sort of closeness. The next morning, when we were in the kitchen and she was making coffee, I decided to confront her. I probably shouldn't have done it then, as I was cranky and full of anger, but I went for it. I asked her if she knew so and so, her AP, hearing his name, she turned and looked at me with a look of surprise on her face. At first, she said no, but then said yes, he was a science teacher at the junior high. I had my tablet in front of me and said, I just read where he passed away from the big C. She said, that's terrible, he was so young. She continued, saying she didn't know him well, but knew he had a wife and a son. I let it go for a while and watched her. After she sat down and served me coffee, she was on edge and nervous, and started looking at her smartphone. I let a few minutes go by and then asked her if she ever had done any work with this guy. She looked at me in frustration and said no, then asked why I was asking her about him. I said, are you sure about that, and she said yes, she was sure, and acted like I was crazy for asking. By this time, I was tired of dancing around the subject, so I came right out and told her I knew otherwise. I told her I had proof that she and this guy had a three-year affair and she needed to tell me everything right now. She asked me what I was talking about and I told her she knew exactly what I was talking about and to stop playing dumb. She started crying and asked me how I knew. I said that wasn't important, but I told her I had all their love messages. She then tried gaslighting me, saying those messages were just them role-playing for fun to see and that they never took things any further. I stopped her and asked her to repeat herself, and again she said they never had physical contact. I then pulled up the video of them together and hit play, and she lost it. She went from denying anything happened to apologizing and saying it all happened four years ago and she's a different person now. After that, I got up from my seat and walked out to the patio, and she followed behind me, crying and begging me to talk to her. But I told her I wanted to be alone. She then started crying loudly and raising her voice, saying please, please with this. I stepped back into the house as to not cause a scene in our neighborhood. By this time, I was really getting angry and went into the bedroom and started packing. She tried pulling me away and hugging me to prevent me from doing so. I told her. If she didn't let me go, I would send the video to her parents. After hearing this, she quickly released me and laid on the bed, crying and saying she was so sorry. I finished packing and headed out the door. 
She asked where I was going, and I told her I'd be staying in a hotel for a while. I left her crying there and drove away. I drove over here to the same coffee shop I'm sitting at today, which is just down the road from my office. I then made a reservation at the hotel across the street and spent the rest of the morning here as I contemplated my next steps. During the entire time, my wife was relentlessly calling and texting me, but I didn't respond until I checked into the hotel at 3 p.m. It was then I answered one of her calls, and we talked for nearly two hours. I told her I was going to divorce her, and she should prepare accordingly. She spent the rest of the time pleading with me and trying to change my mind. During the conversation, I asked her to explain her relationship with her AP. She told me they both shared a particular disgusting fetish, nothing more. She said their physical acts meant nothing emotionally and then tried proving this to me by body shaming the guy. She told me, you can see from the video how unattractive and emaciated he was. She said that obviously I could see that she would never leave me for him and that their meetups were just to satisfy the fetish they both had, which she claims to no longer have. I responded by telling her she has serious mental problems and should see a doctor about it. I probably shouldn't have said that as she immediately latched onto that statement and admitted she probably was insane for doing what she did. She then transitioned to telling me it all happened over four years ago and that she's never once even thought about being with anyone else since. I countered and told her the only reason she ended the affair is that her AP moved five hours away to take a position in another school district. She then tried telling me she ended the affair way before that, but I told her she was lying because the video was recorded the day before he and his family left town. She didn't have a response to that, and right there I knew my wife was not only a cheater but a habitual liar. On Monday of this past week, I met with my attorney to let her know what transpired over the weekend and to advise her I wanted to expedite the divorce process. She said she would make it happen then recommended I cease all contact with my wife and have all future communications go through her. She also told me confronting her without witnesses was very risky and to never do that again. She explained she's had multiple cases where husbands have been falsely accused in these situations. I heeded her advice and told her I'd abide by this going forward. So that's where things stand right now. Everything has happened so fast, I haven't had a chance to mourn the loss of my marriage and I don't feel too bad right now, but I know it will eventually get to me. Now, for the third update, after I gave my attorney the approval to expedite the divorce, I told my family, and they were shocked and disappointed in my wife. Their main concern was that I was all right and taking care of myself. I assured them I was, but even so, they made arrangements to travel down to spend a few days with me the following week. The next day, I got a call from my mother-in-law. She apologized to me for her daughter's behavior and asked if there was any chance I'd reconsider, or at least think things through before divorcing her. I told her I already had, and now all I want is an amicable divorce so that we both can move on with our lives. She said she understood my position, and we ended the call on good terms. The following week, my parents arrived in town on Thursday and got a room at the hotel where I was staying. I took Thursday and Friday off to spend time with them, and we had a good time sightseeing during the day and going out to dinner at night. On Saturday morning, my mom said that my mother-in-law had called her last night, and she and my father-in-law wanted to meet my mom and dad for lunch. I didn't have a problem with this, as our parents had become friendly since we got married. They're not super close, but they are friendly and stay in touch on a regular basis. I told them that was fine, and they met up at a nearby restaurant. While there, my mom called me and said my in-laws would like to see me. I told them to come over to the hotel, and we could meet out on the back deck by the pool. We met, and it was nice seeing them. My in-laws were not pushy at all and were just very apologetic and concerned for my well-being. We had a nice visit, and they really didn't try to convince me to stay with their daughter until the very end of our meeting. It was then when my mother-in-law asked if there was any way I could forgive her and stay married, and I told her, unfortunately, there wasn't. She said, okay, I'll drop it, but added she had to at least try. I told her I understood. We all hugged, said our goodbyes, and they left. That was it. I now just have to wait for the hearing to be scheduled so I can get this all over with and move on with my life. Now, for the final update, I thought since our state had no-fault divorce laws, the process would go quickly, but it didn't. I had to wait almost nine months for the hearing. I also thought no-fault divorce laws meant both parties just split things equally and walked away, but I was wrong there too. Even though I was the one who paid 70% of the bills and contributed 85% of the assets, I still was required to pay alimony. 
instead of paying alimony money for four years, my attorney negotiated an additional lump sum payment of $29,000 that was paid to my ex-wife after we sold our house. How is this even fair? My attorney said that I could have claimed the assets I owned prior to marriage. However, I made the mistake of adding my wife as a joint owner on the accounts right after we got married, so they too were split 50 50ths That's all water under the bridge now, and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just glad it's all over, and I'm a free man now. As for my ex-wife, she and I remained on civil terms throughout the process, although she constantly kept asking me for a second chance right up to the divorce and has continued to do so for weeks after. She's expressed her strong feelings for me and insists she won't give up. While she hasn't been intrusive, every few weeks she reminds me of her affection through texts, reassuring me she's still interested and available if I have a change of heart. The most surprising thing occurred last week when she asked if I'd consider having a child with her, even suggesting I be a donor. I declined both propositions firmly. Despite our divorce, she insisted on me fathering her child, claiming she doesn't want anyone else. This conversation left me unsettled, and I believe it's time to cease communication with her. I'll express this firmly yet kindly if she contacts me again. Meanwhile, I plan to inform her parents discreetly of her actions, hoping they can help guide her. Despite the financial losses from the divorce, I value my newfound freedom. Thank you for your support. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.